Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorr and today I want to talk about ISFJ flow type. I want to talk about being introverted, sensing, feeling and judging, the ISFJ's top cognitive functions. I want to talk about ISFJ's top best relationship options and I want to talk about the difference between an assertive compared to a turbulent or conscientious ISFJ. Now let me start off by saying most of my interactions with ISFJs have been very positive. Actually all my interactions with ISFJs have been very positive. I've yet to meet an ISFJ I didn't like. I tend to instantly get caught up in your native innate charm and ability to befriend almost anyone. I tend to find ISFJs to be highly caring and giving personality types eager to help and I tend to find them to be very modest and patient types that will let you talk to the end, will listen to you, will pay attention to what you say and will give you the attention and space that you might need in any given situation. ISFJs tend to be highly consistent and easy to depend on and beyond that ISFJs tend to be great teachers and great at explaining and making anything sound easy. Now if you look throughout our history there are about six stories or characters in stories and history that speak to ISFJs. ISFJs in stories tend to be influencers, you know, very popular, very good at getting people to listen to them and very good at politics and getting people engaged in what they are saying. ISFJs beyond that tend to have leadership positions. They tend to be people that everyone else tend to be dependent on. They tend to be the people that are the backbone of our society. They tend to be the one people rely on and come to ask for questions when help or service is needed. ISFJs tend to be the organizers or the hosts of society, the ones that get everything to work and run smoothly, the ones that make sure everything happens on time, the timetables are followed, that things are and happen in the way they are supposed to, that a workplace operates smoothly, that everything is in the right place at the right time, that there are no disruptions. And ISFJs tend to have a caregiving archetypal role in our society. That means they're often drawn to being helpful and giving figures. They tend to make good diplomats. They tend to be the people that set their own needs last and the needs of others first. ISFJs tend to be healers or counselors and people that listen and make you feel understood and seen. They can make good priests, counselors, therapists, doctors, people that... Uh, give you space, that let you heal, that help you see and understand yourself, your own emotions and your own experiences. And ISFJs tend to make great teachers, great at explaining just about anything, good at making things seem easy, good at building proof and getting evidence for what things are, good at sharing and making other people understand reality and what is happening around us. They're usually very experienced, they're usually very knowledgeable, they usually have a lot of information and facts and data to share with others. It makes sense then that the ISFJ in flow has a set of four cognitive functions they can pull on naturally and easily and effortlessly and with energy and motivation. These four functions are introverted sensing, introverted feeling, sensing judging, and feeling judging. Now the last two are added to the new Jungian system. That means they are not discussed in the original MBTI, yet serve very important roles to help us understand the ISFJ personality type. Beyond being patient or beyond being a good listener, the ISFJ is a judging personality type. That means they act proactively in social situations, they take initiative to conversations, they open up discussions, they manage and organize the group, they build the team spirit, they form the social glue in any given situation. Now to connect the cognitive functions to the archetypes that I mentioned above, it's introverted sensing that will make an ISFJ a great teacher, introverted feeling that will make an ISFJ a great healer, therapist or counselor. It is feeling judging that will make an ISFJ a great caregiver, a cook, a helper, a support figure, or a team builder. And finally, it is sensing and judging that will make the ISFJ a good host of events, an organizer, a planner, and somebody that will be disciplined and reliable. 
Now introversion stands for self, and sensing stands for facts, feelings stand for values, and judging stands for goals and organization. Now if you combine these four, you get an ISFJ in flow. Introversion provides you with a sense of calm and stability. Sensing provides you with a sense of energy and action. Feeling gives you a sense of values and meaning. Judging gives you a sense of control. And if any of these are weakening, if you lose touch with either of these values in yourself or any of the above earlier mentioned archetypes, you will feel less like yourself. The ISFJ's opposite is the ENTP, and when the ISFJ disintegrates, they disintegrate into an ENTP personality type. Their key stressors in life are change, power, variation, and potential and freedom and chaos. So what an ISFJ wrestles the most in life is disorganization or chaos, lack of proof, change and unexpected events, tactics, games, and people that play on power. And it's difficult for an ISFJ to be in an environment that promotes this. For an ISFJ then, it's strange but true that ISFJs can be very attracted to ENTPs. Yet the top three matches for an ISFJ are ENTPs, ESFPs and other ISFJs. Chances are if you're an ISFJ you will be attracted to one of these three possible relationship combinations. The ENTP is attractive because they give contrast, you know, nobody makes you feel better about yourself than an ENTP. When, as an ISFJ, around an ENTP, you can feel truly in control, you can feel truly empowered, you can feel truly useful, you can feel that you have something to contribute, you can feel that you have something different, valuable to put on the table that the ENTP lacks, and you can feel needed by another person, really, really needed. Somebody cares and wants what you have. The other option for an ISFJ is another ISFJ. Yes, it's very common to date people of your own type. It's popular because ISFJs will give reassurance in self. They will make you feel reassured for who you are. They will agree with you. They will see the world the way you do. They will understand you. They will work like you do. They will think like you do. And that will make you feel like, wow, I'm not so bad after all. I'm not strange. I'm not weird. I'm just me. And that's quite a relief. Now the third and last option to mention is the ESFP personality type. The ESFP is a great option because, well, ESFPs really tend to need ISFJs in their life. The attention seeking, the entertaining, the fun loving, the spontaneous ESFP often feels drawn to somebody that will feel calm and reliable and patient with them. Somebody that will listen to them, somebody that will be patient with them, somebody that will understand them and make them feel understood and not so crazy after all. Yeah, ISFJs tend to be people that can match really well with ESFPs just because you mirror each other. So you don't think the same way, you think differently. And because of this, the ISFJ-ESFP relationship requires you to step out of your own comfort zone. Once in a while you need to change things up. Once in a while you need to do something spontaneous. Once in a while you need to get out there and learn and try things out for yourself. You can't just sit back and teach something or talk about something or listen from a distance. You have to sometimes do things on your own. And yeah, no other personality type can push you towards your values and interests like an ESFP. An ESFP can be that missing piece of the equation, that additional push and drive that gets you moving in life and gets good things to happen to you. If you are prepared to let go of some of that need of control intrinsic to all personality types. Now I've studied subtypes for a long time and today I want to talk about ISFJs that are turbulent versus ISFJs that are assertive. 
An assert device of J is in tune with their flow functions. They act and they move forward feeling control and power and use and energy and passion in what they do. And the turbulent ISFJ moves around lacking energy, feeling easily drained, feeling easily discouraged. The ISFJ who is turbulent often doubts themselves and the ISFJ who is turbulent often feels they have no control over a situation. So if you're an assertive ISFJ, you trust your own leadership and power. You can get in and you can fit in with basically anyone. You have a strong sense of routine and organization skills. You feel you have control of the situation. You know what's going on. You feel read up and practiced and knowledgeable about what you do. You trust your own skills and you trust your own feelings. You understand and you trust your understanding rather than question it. You believe that you can do good and that you can be of help to other people. So the turbulent ISFJ then is and has some of the opposite struggles of this. They can get easily discouraged by the world around them. They can feel that uh, while they have... Now the ISFJ who is turbulent struggles with all of these. They have not yet gotten in touch with their flow functions and so they get easily discouraged by environmental circumstance. They feel they have no control and that they cannot fulfill their goals and that they cannot respect or remain true to themselves because the world does not accept them. They are afraid to look stupid. They are afraid to be different. They are afraid of uh, their own power. They're afraid that they will hurt or upset other people or that they will do more harm than good. They doubt their own routines and uh, patterns and systems that they developed. They don't, they start second guessing themselves and what they do and what they've developed and what they practice for such a long time. They feel there is no point to their discipline and they feel it will not do any good in the long term and won't get them anywhere. They have this tendency to shut down their own emotions and tell themselves and other people feelings are stupid. And they worry constantly that they might have missed something or that they're, they don't know enough yet and that they're not capable enough and that they haven't read enough and that they have, haven't studied enough. And so they struggle to move out or try or get into anything new. So to end this video, I want to ask you, do you feel you are more of an assertive ISFJ or more of a conscientious or turbulent ISFJ? Do you know any ISFJs or are you an ISFJ yourself? What are your personal experiences of the ISFJ personality type and do you relate more or less to any of the archetypes I mentioned in this video? Thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video. Now when you're a turbulent ISFJ, you struggle with all of the previously mentioned personality traits. You doubt yourself, you doubt your own feelings, you distrust your own emotions, you don't know or understand yourself. You haven't introspected or processed enough and you don't feel in tune with your own feelings, you don't listen to yourself. You don't feel you have a control of the situation. You don't feel you can keep going. You doubt your routines and what you've been doing for such a long time. You feel you haven't read up or studied enough about something to talk about it and share it with other people. You tr distrust your own knowledge and experience even though perhaps you are one of the most well-read and knowledgeable persons in this room. You struggle or you fear that you will hurt other people and so you don't dare to get involved or to help out in other people's lives. You struggle with a fear of looking stupid, of seeming ignorant or stupid. 
and you feel often discouraged by environmental factors. You know, you might have some kind of ideas or you might have a strong sense of self or you might have some goals, but you never get to the go stage, you know, because you never feel it's the right time. There, There's no opportunities available. There's no chances. Then there are no rooms for me. There's no place, you know, it's not time. And so you get stuck, you know. ISFJs and introverted judging types, they can get stuck very easily if they don't trust themselves enough. So what you need to do is you need to develop genuine confidence. And that means confidence that is true. Confidence that you feel is true. Confidence that you can back up with experience. You know, it's not just that you believe in yourself. And everybody will tell you, believe in yourself. But you also have to feel it is right to believe in yourself but you must also have experience and positive experiences that will verify that it is right to have confidence and to believe in yourself to maintain a state of flow and confidence and to remain true to yourself you need to go out and do things and to and prove to yourself that your beliefs and your trust in yourself is warranted and positive and there's only one way to have be have confidence in self and that is to be yourself now if you're an isfj let me know in the comments to, down below do you feel more red or blue do you feel more dominant or confident or do you feel more blue namely conscientious or turbulent do you know any isfjs or are you an isfj yourself and which cognitive functions or archetypes of the isfj do you relate to the most perhaps the healer perhaps the helper perhaps the teacher which one feels more you now finally, what are your personal experiences of ISFJs and what do you think is the ISFJ best match? Thanks for watching this video and do check out my other videos on other personality types. Learning about other personality types can teach you even more about yourself.